Over. Put another target up there. Make sure it's got uh, targets on. Remarkably, after only three weeks, 98% master the weapon. That's as good as we can expect any five to shoot right there. Delivering on Eugene Stoner's engineering breakthrough requires cutting edge manufacturing technology. Sabre Defense is a major supplier of weapons to the U.S. military and police forces around the world. We manufacture both commercial and military weapons. We make commercial AR-15s and M-16s for law enforcement. For all its revolutionary design, the M-16 is basically a series of three tubes. The barrel, the receiver, and the stock. The heart of the weapon is the receiver. It houses the magazine well, the trigger assembly, and the bolt carrier group. And it's here that cutting-edge manufacturing meets high-tech materials. We begin the manufacture using solid aluminum forgings. We then use the high-speed machining center behind me to machine out about 80% of the weight of these so that they fit together to form the receiver. Next comes the 20-inch barrel, bored out by slowly pulling a carbide drill bit through the center. The barrel is then smoothed and scored with a spiral-shaped groove in a process called rifling. By adding rifling inside the barrel, you can spin the bullet, which stabilizes it in flight and makes it much more accurate. The finished aluminum receiver is then bolted together in a straight line with the steel barrel and composite buttstock. This linear layout also has another advantage. It keeps the gun from rising when fired in full auto mode. As the bullet travels down the barrel, the bolt carrier recoils directly straight back into the buffer tube maintained in the stock. That gives a straight impulse back, which helps reduce recoil in the weapon. And there it is, the M16, the ultimate tool of American warfare. But it didn't start out that way. In 1962, with tensions escalating in Vietnam, a thousand M16s were sent to the South Vietnamese and special forces working with them. It was time for the M16 to face the ultimate test. Was the rifle really ready for battle? The reliability of it was almost zero. In 1962, things were heating up in Vietnam. Elite American soldiers were dropped in to help the South Vietnamese fight the Communist North. The weapon they brought with them? The M16. It was time to see if the gun imagined in the clean rooms of the aerospace industry could hack it in the jungles of Vietnam. The answer came quickly. The Vietnamese loved them because they're getting a real rifle cartridge that is fairly lethal. So reports started coming back that, hey, this is a really great rifle. Troops raved about the little black rifle. They loved how light it was, how fast and accurately it fired. And most of all, they were astounded at the incredible killing power of the 5.56 round. Because of its devastating power, troops started calling it the meat axe. Basically, you had a, a lightweight round that was traveling at such a high rate of speed that when the front of the round decelerated, the back of the round kept moving forward at the same speed and it created a tumbling effect. To demonstrate the effect, sharpshooter John Weiler fires into ballistics gel. Ballistics gel is designed to uh, simulate the human body. And basically what we'll do is when we shoot into it, it shows us the terminal effects that projectile produces once it enters the body. The round enters the gel on a flat plane, but once inside, it begins to tumble. The tumbling shows just how much damage a round does to the human body. When it penetrates, it starts rotating. And so when it exits, it puts a big hurt on you, and brings you down. But despite its killing power, the average grunt's love affair with the M16 didn't last long. Within months of its issue, reports came back to the Pentagon that the gun frequently jammed during combat. If you had a round in the chamber, 
it would not extract. The, the, the back end would be literally pulled off, and then the next round would stove pipe into it. You might get off six rounds, you might get off 20 rounds. Then it jams. The reliability of it was almost zero. In all its thousands of tests, this problem had never occurred. Because of its advanced design, the Pentagon considered the M16 to be self-cleaning. In fact, they were so confident, they didn't even issue cleaning kits to troops. The troops believed that it was a self-cleaning rifle, that it didn't need the maintenance that they were used to with the M14. So how come these futuristic weapons weren't living up to their promise? Turns out the problem stemmed from the very same ammo that gave the weapon its reputation as the meat axe. Throughout the M16's testing, the military had used stick powder in the ammo. But when the gun went into mass production, the government decided to switch to the more widely used ball-type powder. It was a coarser grain powder, and this coupled with the much more humid jungle environment uh, resulted in a lot of failures. The combustion on ball powder just isn't complete as it is on the stick powder, so you just got a lot more carbon in the weapon. And it was that unburned carbon powder that clogged up the receiver and led to jams. The bolt itself would not fully seat to where it lock inside the chamber. So when you pull it, it wouldn't actually drop the firing pin. What's going to happen is it's going to get to a position about right here. And when you pull the trigger, nothing's going to happen. And in the middle of an ambush, that failure could prove deadly. To solve the problem, the military scrambled to issue cleaning kits and special training manuals as engineers furiously worked to modify the design. They determined that by lining the barrel with chrome, dirt and debris wouldn't build up. It gives a corrosion protection because the chrome plates against moisture and prevents corrosion of the inside of the lining of the barrel. And it also uh, gives it longer life because the chrome is actually harder than the steel we make the barrel out of. Engineers also added a new feature to make sure that the bolt would lock no matter what, the forward assist. The forward assist was introduced so soldiers can just push on the rear and it would push that bolt into the chamber, allowing the M16 to be ready to fire. The new design, dubbed the M16A1, immediately boosted the gun's performance. One man who benefited from that change was Philip McPeak. Assigned to the 11th Armored Cavalry, McPeak's unit acted as a screen between the South Vietnamese and the North Vietnam border. With ambushes common, McPeak kept his gun by his side. You had to be armed anywhere you went. You didn't go anywhere without your M16. On June 9, 1968, that weapon saved McPeak's life. His platoon had been sent in to rescue a downed pilot, but the North Vietnamese were using that pilot as bait for a deadly ambush. It was a single lane dirt road with triple canopy jungle on both sides. The North Vietnamese had drug a big log out in the road to slow us down. And when we stopped to, to move the log out of the road, that's when they popped the bush on us. Big Peak's unit found itself in the middle of an intense firefight, and he opened fire with his M16. I put about 20 magazines through it as fast as I could go. Even after firing hundreds of rounds on full auto, his weapon didn't jam.